in the bin. No, I'm good. Do you want me to stand? Welcome to Caring's Women in Motion Conversations. I'm Elizabeth Wagmeister, Variety's Chief Correspondent, and I am so excited to be here today for the kickoff of this great program at the 75th Cannes Film Festival. We have a wonderful guest for you here today, the one and only Viola Davis. Of course, you know her from her award-winning work in Fences, In Doubt, The Help, How to Get Away with Murder. Viola Davis is the most nominated black woman in Oscars history and one of the most decorated actors in the world. Caring's Women in Motion conversation celebrates achievements for women in cinema, but also beyond the film industry. Caring's program celebrates the progress of women in society and beyond, and I cannot think of a better guest than Viola Davis. So with that, let's get started. But for everybody in the audience, if I can ask you to please make sure your cell phones are silenced. You're free to take photos and video, but we just don't want any noise to interrupt the conversation. Thank you very much. Oh my God. Thank you very much. 
I mean, it is the Cannes Film Festival, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> All righty, Viola. You have had such an incredible career. As we were doing the introduction, I listed some of your many accomplishments. Mm -hmm. We spoke about your many awards, your work, but the one thing that I didn't get to in my introduction is that you have now added author to your <laughs> resume. So Viola just has a memoir that was published. What was that process like for writing for you? Um, that process was very cathartic. Mm -hmm. You know, I started writing the book during the pandemic where I felt like I was having a, a really existential crisis of meaning. You know, Black Lives Matter was happening, and of course the COVID of it all, mm -hmm. and LGBTQ community fighting for the rights we had, a very sort of contentious election, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I'm starting to look at my neighbors different, I'm starting to look at my white counterparts different. I'm sure they're looking at me differently, not negative or positive, just in a way that's more woke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with all of that, questioning connection, questioning what am I doing, mm -hmm. what is all of that. Mm -hmm. And whenever you have an existential crisis, I always say, it's time to press a reset button, right? It's like you're, when your cell phone is messing up, mm -hmm. they tell you to turn it off, mm -hmm. right? Turn mm -hmm. back on. And so that's what I did. I went back to the beginning with my book of Viola as a little girl mm -hmm. who, yeah. And in that book, you, as you said, you talk about Viola as a little girl. You yeah. are very raw and honest and you yeah. hold nothing back. You write about your <clears throat> childhood. Um, your upbringing. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, how did your upbringing affect the woman that you are today? You know what? It's made me a fighter mm -hmm. and a survivor. Mm -hmm. That despite the tra trauma uh, in my past, in my childhood, despite the fact that, listen, at the end of the day, <laughs> I grew up in a predominantly white community, mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel adored, I didn't feel pretty. Mm -hmm. But despite all of those feelings, I still kept moving. Mm -hmm. I keep, you know, uh, you know spouting the, uh, the quote from Anne Lamont, which is, all courage is, is fear said with prayers. Mm -hmm. That I'm, I'm very uh, good with understanding that I have fear, understanding that I have anxiety, understanding that I have self-doubt, but it doesn't keep my, foot, my feet and my spirit from moving forward. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I actually don't think that ambition and moving forward is the absence of fear. Just like I don't think that a great life is the absence of failure and heartbreak and trauma. I think all of it is a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. And I think really messed up things happen. But through it all, Absolutely, without question, I could say this. I felt that I was worth it. Mm -hmm. I felt that there's something out there in the horizon, the land of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> and Viola deserved that land of Oz. Mm -hmm. Where you do you know? think that came from, that belief in yourself, that even during the tough times you knew you deserved more and that you had bigger things ahead of you? I have absolutely no idea where it came from. I'm sure that when my life is over, and for me, me, my belief, and I meet God, he will explain it all to me. Mm -hmm. Why did you inject that in me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, all I know is that I have it. Mm -hmm. Just like if you did a DNA profile, mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on in you. Mm -hmm. You really don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you get your DNA, and you're like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> right, right. You know, mm -hmm. but... Um, but what I know that I know that I know is that there's something about getting your heart broken a lot. And it breaks. And it breaks because, you know, you, especially if you're living a life, you're going to get heartbreak. Mm -hmm. So you hit the bottom, you get the heartbreak, and then you have a choice to just sort of wallow in it and stay there. Mm -hmm. Or it gives you clarity mm -hmm. of what life is really about. Mm -hmm. it's, it, 
you know, I was watching a program where this guy was driving home, this sort of little tragic. He was driving home because something had happened to his daughter. He was absolutely beside himself. But he made an observation as he was driving back to his house to see what was going on with his daughter. Mm -hmm. He saw everything with such clear clarity, mm -hmm. the trees, mm -hmm. the birds on the side of the road, you know, the water. All of a sudden, he's like, wow, this route, this route that I take every day, and all of a sudden, I'm seeing it with a totally different vision, like an x-ray vision. And I think that's what happens even when you get your heart broken a lot in life. Mm -hmm. You then appreciate life. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm telling you right now, I appreciate a good meal. <laughs> I appreciate a full refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I appreciate clean sheets. Mm -hmm. I appreciate going to a furniture store and buying a new bed. Mm -hmm. I do. I appreciate soap and water mm -hmm. because I never had it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I got from my life. Mm -hmm. I appreciate things that other people take for granted. Right, right. You are talking about heartbreak and how those moments can really end up resulting in the best if that's mm. what you do with it. Acting is this whole industry. It's an industry where you hear the word no a lot. You hear the a lot of words a lot. A lot of words a lot. <laughs> a lot of, which I won't say. But a lot of words a lot, especially the word no when yes. you are coming up through auditions and mm -hmm. when they don't see that you're the right fit. Is there a moment in your mind that sticks out as a moment of heartbreak or rejection through your career that really was a moment for you that you were able to see the positive and grow from it? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> I could point to those moments, mm -hmm. but I will say this, seeing the positive of it takes time. Yes. Because there's something about it, you know, it's how do you make a life? Mm -hmm. How do you, I don't care what anyone says, when you leave this life, you want everyone to know that you took up space in it. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? Mm -hmm. if, if I were to be really honest and bold, mm -hmm. I do that through acting, because I don't really have, well, I do in my life. I have my husband mm -hmm. and my daughter, and that mm -hmm. makes, and my mom and my sister, that makes my life meaningful. But so your work is really important to you. Mm -hmm. It's your stamp. It's part of your legacy. So it hurts when people reject. I have had, I would say, mo any rejection that I've had where people said that I was not pretty enough for a role really gets on my damn nerves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart and it makes me angry. Mm -hmm. um, for many reasons. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is based in race. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, if I had my same features and I were five shades lighter, it would just be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I had blonde hair, blue eyes, and even mm -hmm. a wide nose, mm -hmm. it would be even a little bit different than what it is now. Mm -hmm. We could talk about colorism. We could talk about race. We could, it pisses me off. Mm -hmm. And it's broken my heart. Um, I, any number of projects, which mm -hmm. I won't name. How I've dealt with it is exactly what I told you before. Mm -hmm. Courage is fear said with prayers. Mm -hmm. I got the help. <clears throat> I got the Oscar nomination for the help. And then it was over. And then I thought, and now what? Mm -hmm. I was getting the same types of roles. Mm -hmm. Because how else are they going to cast a dark-skinned black woman who is really not a model? <laughs> So you're going to get three days here, two days there, two days there. And I had hit my bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that then the only sort of position I could move into that gave me some sense of worth and the only way to reconcile mm -hmm. <coughs> that anger mm -hmm. was to find the roles myself. That was my response to that. Mm -hmm. It was sort of, uh, excuse my language, a fuck it. Mm -hmm. And um, there is value to anger. Mm -hmm. There is value to a well-placed fuck it. Mm -hmm. Because with that, with that burst, 
I feel like that verse represents that one moment of change, mm -hmm. that after that you can never be the same. Mm -hmm. there's, there's something about pure unbridled anger that's healthy, not mentally ill anger, okay? <laughs> that's healthy anger that, that sparks, um, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? That sparks um, movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot be complacent afterwards. You gotta do something about the anger because you don't wanna go back there again. And I would say that when I came to LA and all of the sort of rejection I got, for lead roles mm -hmm. because of the way I looked, mm -hmm. supposedly, mm -hmm. pissed me off enough mm -hmm. to make the change to start Juvie Productions with my husband, mm -hmm. you know, to find the material ourselves and to make it as big as we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. People said, okay, you, all, you should only start with you and your husband. I don't have to do anything. I could do exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. That was my response to mm -hmm. all of that rejection. That's sort of a nebulous answer but it was a great answer thank mm -hmm. you for that and I think something interesting that you just mentioned is you were nominated for the Oscar for the help yeah and that was a rock bottom moment because you think on the outside people think you're nominated for an Oscar you've made it you can kind of pick whatever you want to do you can mm -hmm. have your say walk into any room and it wasn't the case for you but I think that's with everything that people sort of have a reaction to everything towards relationships, mm -hmm. towards having a kid, mm -hmm. towards you know marriage, everything that's like Thursday night lineup on ABC. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's like the famous line from Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men mm -hmm. is you know you don't want to you don't want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. We want to see the Oscars. We want to see people dressed in pretty dresses. We, and, 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 and then they get the award. It's like, she won. She finally won. Mm -hmm. And you see them walk off the stage, and you imagine a life for them mm -hmm. that you want. Mm -hmm. That's why that's the only issue I have with vision boards, mm -hmm. is people put a vision of their lives on the board of where they want to be, but they don't know that that destination comes with reality. Mm -hmm. It's the minutia of actually being there. Mm -hmm. And the reality of being there in Hollywood is, where are the roles? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, good sort of, a, a, a good sort of place to go in your mind mm -hmm. when anyone walks off the stage is you look at their stats. Mm -hmm. Are they a man, are they a woman? Yeah. Are they young, are they old? Mm -hmm. Are they black, are they white? Mm -hmm. And then when they walk off that stage, you go back to, I don't know, uh, Redbox, Netflix, or any, and look at all the movies that are being made. And you look at all the roles and all the stories that are being woven there. Do they have a person who looks like that person who walked off that stage with that Oscar? Mm -hmm. And if that movie had those people in it, what are the roles that they're playing? And that gives you a good bar as to how their career will progress mm -hmm. based on what is out there, based on what's being developed, based on what's being encouraged. If you have an issue with it, think about it. Let's go even deeper. Mm -hmm. What kind of movies do you plop down your money to go see? Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you go there, then you go to a deeper place as opposed to just staying in the fantasy place of, okay, you have an Oscar, okay, you're all good. Okay, so you wanna get something to eat later? <laughs> mm -hmm. As opposed to, oh, you got an Oscar, you're Hispanic, you're darker, mm -hmm. Q, you're whatever, so. When's the last time I saw a movie with a darker, hue Hispanic woman in it in the lead role? Mm -hmm. Do I even wanna see it? Now I'm gonna go see the Marvel movie instead. Why am I gonna go see the Marvel movie? Oh, I'm gonna see the Marvel movie because that guy is so cute. <laughs> and I want him to get with her because she's cute too. Mm -hmm. And ba 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 ba. And you see that you you then you see the problem. Mm -hmm. And you see the extent to which you are a part of the problem. Mm -hmm. 
we need to start encouraging the storytelling out there with people who are on the periphery. Mm -hmm. Instead of sitting on a stage or getting a microphone and talking about, there should be more opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. We have to understand what part we play in creating the kind of world we want to see. Mm -hmm. And then that sort of, it, it, it sort of uh, metastasizes into every aspect of our culture. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, there is a sort of resistance to that. Mm -hmm. Maybe because that's the way we've seen Hollywood all our lives, you know, with movie making and the Marilyn Monroe of it all mm -hmm. and, you know, the Joan Crawford's of it all. Mm -hmm. But now we have a different life where people are fighting for space. Mm -hmm. The Joan Crawfords are replaced by Shaniqua Watkins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, and I don't know, uh, 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 you know, Garcelle Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. You know, these people who are, where if storytelling were more expansive, mm -hmm. then I could be sitting here and mm -hmm. I could, you know, listen, I could be sitting here and I could have a sort of uh, a, a movie career that sort of mirrored counterparts who are my age, mm -hmm. who don't necessarily look like me. Mm -hmm. But that's going into another conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. If I were to go full circle, I'm going on, is my anger, uh, that six, eight-year-old Viola, is because I was running from a world that was spitting me out. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt. Mm -hmm. With the boys and really a culture calling me that ugly black nigga. That what it motivated me to do is yes, get out of my life. Mm -hmm. But what it also motivated me to do in my anger is to create a life that didn't spit any more violas out mm -hmm. like that just spit them out and told them that there's nothing out there for them. There's no rope. There's no journey. <clears throat> that you're the leftover. Mm -hmm. um, that's why my husband and I have Juvie Productions, yeah. So I wanted to ask about Juvie Productions. You are creating space yeah. for others. I also think <clears throat> it's interesting that how to get away with murder created by Shonda Rhimes, a black woman, mm -hmm. creating space. Have you seen change through the work that you are doing at Juvie Productions, how to get away with murder? These roles that hadn't been seen before, are you noticing that the work that you are doing is resulting in progress? Yes. Mm -hmm. I say yes all the time like that, but I don't really know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, you know, even when I walk in the room, people are like Viola Davis. I'm like, who's she? Right. Mm -hmm. But so mm -hmm. I, 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 I actually, here's what I will say. Mm -hmm. I hope mm -hmm. is what I'll say. Mm -hmm. I hope. Mm -hmm. But I know that when I left How to Get Away with Murder, I don't see a lot of dark-skinned women in lead roles on TV. Right. Not even in streaming services. Mm -hmm. So once again, that goes into ideology and ethos and mentality. Mm -hmm. And that's speaking in the abstract. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you hiring a dark-skinned woman? When she walks in the room and you say she blows you away, mm -hmm. then create space mm -hmm. and storytelling mm -hmm. for her. So when she thrives, she's not thriving despite mm -hmm. of her circumstances. She's thriving because of the circumstances. But um, I see that there is quantity mm -hmm. more out there because there are 400 shows on streaming services. Right. So I see that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of storytelling that's expansive, that is as expansive as one's imagination, that's not happening yet. Mm -hmm. There's just certain genres and certain storytelling that you, when you're in a room as a producer, mm -hmm. you have to really fight for those stories. Mm -hmm. Like, if I wanted to play a mother who, whose son, we lived in a challenging neighborhood, 
low-income neighborhood and he was a gang member who died in drive-by shooting, I could get that made. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I played a woman who was, I don't know, looking to recreate herself by, I don't know, flying to Nice mm -hmm. and sleeping with five men at the age of 56, mm -hmm. looking like me, I'm going to have a hard time pushing that one, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. as Viola Davis, right. mm -hmm. because people can't reconcile the blackness with spiritual awakening mm -hmm. and sexuality. Mm -hmm. It's too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's too much when you look like my maid Louise. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I actually had a director who did that to me, who said, Louise. And I've known him for like 10 years. And he called me Louise. And I found out it was because his maid's name is Louise. Wow. So that has not changed. Mm -hmm. The, yeah. Did that happen recently when you were the Viola Davis, or was that early? Not that it's okay in any time, but I'm just curious because we see and we hear about a lot of those things happening on sets in the world beyond movies. So it, I'm not asking you to reveal who it is, of course, but at what moment in your career did that happen? Um, that happened at sort of, I, I always have to think, beginning of my career, I've had a long career. Yeah. So I was maybe around 30, so that was a, a while ago. Mm -hmm. But um, what you have to realize is those sort of microaggressions, and they happen all the all time. But to answer your question in terms of the sort of storytelling that's out there, mm -hmm. I always say you put two kids in the room, you give one some crayons, some pencils, mm -hmm. a canvas, you put them in a room with like blank walls and you tell them to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And then you put another kid in the room and you don't give them any pencils, nothing, you tell them not to go crazy, you tell them to sit in his seat, don't do anything, but I want two of you to create a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. But I'm giving this one all the tools to be able to do it, and I'm giving this one all the tools to not be able to do it, mm -hmm. but I expect the same results. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. That you, you are an artist, you want to create, you want to put something out in the world that explodes or whatever, mm -hmm. but you just don't have, the, you don't have the tools or the access to the tools to be able to do it, so then you have to figure it out without getting mad. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I were to be so bold to say. And I am so glad you are, because mm -hmm. you are in a position where you can speak honestly. Mm -hmm. And you are one of Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I think so. Be well, let me say this. Mm -hmm. You have the courage to speak honestly, oh. because a lot don't. Um, I'm being told that it's almost time for audience questions, but I do want to make sure that I can ask you one more thing. Yeah. You said, you know, you walk in a room and people say it's Viola Davis, and you're like, who's that? Well, little girls at home are looking up to you and seeing what you didn't see when you were growing up. You also, you just got to play Michelle Obama mm -hmm. in your latest series. Uh -huh. Little girls at home got to see the first black president, the first black first lady. I know you can't speak too much about that mm -hmm. and the inner workings. We won't ask to reveal your conversations with Miss Obama, but what did it mean to you to have the first black first lady, the first black president in your country at that moment? What did that mean to you? Hope, everything. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. You have to understand when people give you affirmations growing up saying you could be anything, you could do whatever, you know you're beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, who told you you weren't beautiful? And then you don't see any examples of people who look like you who people are saying who are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You don't see that. That's a big thing with dark skinned women. People are like, don't listen to that. Do not listen to that, Viola. Mm -hmm. The dark skinned women are beautiful too. And then you don't see any. Mm -hmm. There's no vision. Mm -hmm. Then you walk in the room and people don't really know that they're doing that because, you know, I'm sort of famous, mm -hmm. so people see me. But when people don't know who I am, mm -hmm. it's interesting how invisible you get. Mm -hmm. You feel seen. Mm -hmm. 
you know? And, and, and that's why even with young black girls, I'm really, really, really cognizant of this. Mm -hmm of always telling them that they're worth it and beautiful. First of all, because that's what I see. And that's what I know that I know that I know is the birthplace of everything. Mm -hmm. It's a birthplace of survival. It's a birthplace of self-love. It's a birthplace of keeping breath in your friggin' lungs. Mm -hmm. Is everybody is always putting a value on you based on your, your, your finance and your looks, how much you mess up or don't. Mm -hmm. And I just tell people, even my daughter, even if you do mess up, I don't mm -hmm. care. You're mm -hmm. still worth it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to barter for it. You don't have to do anything for it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be a certain weight. You don't have to do nothing. You're mm -hmm. worth it. And um, that's what seeing a physical manifestation of anything in the world yeah. does. I was about to say we need more Viola Davises in the world, but... They exist. They just need to be given the space and the opportunity. But thank you for everything that you said, everything that you're doing. We have a few minutes for audience questions. I believe a mic will be coming around. <laughs> Hi, Viola Davis, SCC Boo from Brew. It's an honor. Um, so I wanted to ask you, throughout your illustrious career, um, you've taken a lot of roles that could be perceived through the angry black woman trope and instead given us the many, many layers of a strong black woman, her vulnerabilities, her successes, her weaknesses. And I just want to know, was that a conscious thought and um, idea throughout your career, at the beginning of your career, that you wanted to do that to switch the narrative? Um, that's a good question. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> um, I think that's naturally just what you do as an actor when you step into a role, you want to humanize them. And human beings aren't just all one thing. Mm -hmm. They're not just all angry. There's softness, even with Annalise Keating. Mm -hmm. She definitely was angry. Mm -hmm. But I wanted a vulnerability with the anger. I wanted people to see her sexuality, mm -hmm. not her sexiness. Mm -hmm. Let's, the sexiness drives me a little bit crazy. I mean, in acting, it drives me crazy, not in pictures. Um, mm -hmm. It's naturally what you do because you're trying to humanize them. See, once again, it's my anger as a little girl. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm trapped in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Little Viola always saying, you know who I am? Mm -hmm. You see me? Mm -hmm. And because really, truly, people ask questions like that all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you choose your roles? Mm -hmm. Like, do you choose, why don't you choose roles out there that are not as angry or that are prettier? People have to understand social media has bogarted the definition of what it means to be an actor. Mm -hmm. Most actors have no choice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to repeat it. Most actors have no choice. Mm -hmm. You're not sitting at home. And if any actor says that, they're lying. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's just like women who say, you know, I have a fast metabolism. I can eat bread. <laughs> I can eat dessert at midnight. And I'm like, who are you? It, it's the same thing. They're lying to you. You're not sitting there going, you know what? I want to do an action movie. <laughs> I'm, I don't care if you're 25 or whatever, and then calling your agent up and going, you know what, my next role better be an action movie and I wanna do it with Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. And with me, and I have it in my book, I almost never had a choice. Mm -hmm. Never, okay? So you make do with what you have. And what I had were a lot of crappy roles that I had to humanize. So I had to use my uh, uh, acting skills mm -hmm. to create a three-dimensional character, even in Antoine Fisher, where one day of work, where people can enter the story and at least say, okay, there's more that's going on than her smoking crack. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. We have time for one more question. Hi, good morning. <laughs> I would like to ask you, uh, we know that your heart will, uh, will live forever, of course, as your legacy, but I was wondering, as a human being, what would you like to be remembered for? And just out of curiosity, there is something that you are less bad at, because we 
seems that you can do and achieve everything. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying that. Uh, to my 11-year-old, where I was trying to get her to do her homework last night. But um, <laughs> um, I just want people to feel less alone. I think we went through a whole year, with, I mean, two years now, right? Mm -hmm. Almost three? Yes. With the pandemic, mm -hmm. where you had mental health issues mm -hmm. that were just exposed. And I think a lot of that is, well, I'm not going to say what a lot of that is. Mm -hmm. I just feel for that. But I think in general with people, it's really crappy to feel alone and isolated. Like everything you feel and you think and you're doing is, makes you almost a monster. And there's no way to connect. It's so hard to connect with people nowadays. Let me tell you something, it's hard to connect with yourself. So if I could do anything that makes people feel less alone, those moments that you feel like, you know what, I'm not even worth it. I'm not, it, my life is not even worth it because I do A, B, and C. I want people to know that A, B, and C, there's nothing wrong with that. That just proves that you're alive. I feel good with that. I would. And I get a lot of testimonies from people who say they were moved by my, they moved by my life. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot to me. I think if I achieve that, I'm, I'm good. E even if I didn't win another award, <laughs> I'd be good with that. <laughs> Viola, we had a lot of questions <clears throat> come in from social media. Mm -hmm. I've said now three times that we're out of time, so we'll just get to one of them. But okay. Alexandra from Instagram sent in a question, and she wants to know, for little girls around the world who are watching you, what would be your message for them? Um, I think I said it earlier. Yeah, we've hit on it, but I wanted to make sure that we got one question in. So, from, There were a lot from social media, so we want to make sure that we're reaching them. So I had the message of work being worthy. Yes. And they don't have to do anything to be worthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't care what you look like, what you came from, whatever, you're worth it. Mm -hmm. But also do the best you can to not let the world label you. Mm -hmm. Do the best you can to not do that. I think the world got at me. Mm -hmm. The world gets at all of us, mm -hmm. and then you forget the child in you mm -hmm. that just had unending dreams mm -hmm. and nobody could tell you anything. Mm -hmm. And you had energy to really try to even pursue them. Mm -hmm. And that energy brought you so much joy. Mm -hmm. And you could believe, it's just like my daughter says when I say, Genesis, you look so cute today. She's like, yeah, I know, right? I love that. <laughs> I love the little girls who are like, I know, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And be as overly confident as you possibly can. Be as self-loving as you possibly can. And as Glennon Doyle says, it's your job. If it comes down to disappointing other people and disappointing yourself, choose other people every single time. In fact, your job in life is to disappoint as many people as you possibly can <laughs> to satisfy yourself. At this point, that's what I would tell them, especially the little girls. Thank you. I would. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah.